Hi, guys. Can you hear? Yeah. So the microphone's on, Michael? If I don't ask Michael that, he gets upset. This is some part of his job. Hi, everybody. This feels a little um, distant or unintimate to me, and I wish that I was not in this situation. But thank you all for coming out. Thank you all for being a part of what we are doing. Um, I see students. I see villagers. I see faculty. I see board members, alumni board members, volunteers who presence here always lifts our spirits. Um, I want to thank them, as always, for being such a part of what we're up to. I see staff. Thank you to everybody. Um, I also apologize to anybody for whom um, this is not the hour we were supposed to do this, but it just felt odd to wait. And plus, I don't know about you guys, but I am a lifelong, rabid St. Louis Cardinals fan, and they're playing at 8 o'clock. It's, it's actually not meant to be funny. Can I hear a rousing cheer of go cards, or is that not going to happen? The Reds are out of it, okay? There's nothing that can be done to resuscitate the Reds. Okay, I feel like I have um, spoken to you often, and I feel like you're probably a bit um, bored of my um, sometimes repetitious comments. So I was asking myself and what to say to you tonight. Uh, what's different than last year at this time? Um, and boy, an awful lot is different uh, here this year. And I hope that you can see it. I hope you can feel it. Um, the number one thing, of course, is we've gone from 35 students uh, to about 110 students. And so I think we ought to have a little cheer to welcome these students. If you're in the new class, would you stand up? Would you stand up if you're in the new class? Why you're here and not doing homework, I don't quite know. I'm sure that your tables are divided by language and you're all practicing your languages at your table. Um, this year we also hired, um, I love this word so I get to get it in, a new tranche of faculty. Our, if, if any of the new faculty are here, would you stand, please? <laughs> Linda and Michelle. And Rick, it is um, part of the, the wonderful feeling that we have here is the new people that we have. But I hope that this, the last three talks, the messages have been daunting but doable. At reunion, it was all in, which is still the most important thing for us to communicate to folks. We need people to be all in with this. And tonight, it's coming alive. So the first class, members of the first class, I see a few of you here. Would you rise? Huh, I'm trying to figure out if the applause was relatively equal. I think it was. First class has completed their first academic year. They've completed their first co-op. Um, doubled the faculty, tripled the student body. The courses that are being taught now, three college preparation courses, 11 foundation courses, eight courses in majors, eight courses in community life or community life courses, seven languages courses. We're only teaching three languages, but we have seven courses in languages. I think that's because we have multiple different levels. One global seminar linked to a writing seminar. 51% of the students who entered this year have chosen Spanish, 31% French, 18% Japanese. Over the summer, our first year's class took the oral proficiency um, interview, I think it's called, and all of them outperformed expectations. One student in Japanese, which is a level five difficulty language, um, received the novice rating. Six students intermediate low, six students intermediate intermediate, six students, uh, 10 students intermediate intermediate, sorry, and two students intermediate high. So our language program is highly aspirational, asks a lot of students, and so far they're meeting it. So congratulations to them.
I see Rick, but I don't see Susan Eklund Lean, but we have 54 co-op jobs confirmed. We have 20 more pending. 24 of these are in Ohio, uh, 10 in Pennsylvania, seven in California. Um, you know, many of our students last summer visited Poland uh, on a trip that we hope will be an example of our work um, to embed education, to have trips like this in which there's both educational and academic content and work, physical work under a master craftsman um, to many of those students and some of whom will be presenting uh, at the open session of the board tomorrow. It was a very meaningful trip. Um, I think five or six of our students went to Cayford Mountain, uh, mountaintop removal site in West Virginia with Maya Nye. Um, these were also trips that continue the Antioch tradition of bringing alive classroom learning um, through visiting places that powerfully remind you of what it is all about. We hired our Coretta Scott King director this last year. Derek Weston, are you here? Well, let's applaud for him anyway. Derek Weston, <laughs> who's also the um, minister of the Presbyterian Church in town, um, has taken over um, the Coretta Scott King Center. Um, Derek told me his excitement at opening up the office over there this year, uh, coming upon beautiful, spectacular pictures of Martin Luther King and Coretta Scott King that had just been put uh, in a drawer, um, and the excitement that he feels in this community about the resurrection of what we call uh, the Denman Friday Forums, which are starting again in Yellow Springs, not yet at the scale that Al brought them to, um, but we'll begin again soon, and I know there's a lot of buzz in the community about that. I think that's worthy of some applause, please. This is where I expect the alumni board and the board to begin a little bit, you know, proactive here. If you don't, if you sense there's an applause line that hasn't been met. Strides in accreditation. Thank you, Barry. Strides in accreditation, folks. This is, um, was a mammoth undertaking, still is, um, but we received approval of our preliminary information form. We have a scheduled site visit. The, um, the work is moving forward. It is, it is by no means done, but nice positive steps. North Hall, you know, I hope. <laughs> It, it really is a metaphor for what we're trying to do, to take something in the historic campus, one of the three original buildings, and bring it to modern life, is what this is all about. Taking the best of the past, honoring it, but modernizing it for a new generation of students. Work at the Science Building. I hope you've all been over there. It has begun. We We will be teaching laboratory courses in science in that building in January. Um, it is a critical step for the college. Who said yay? That's excellent, because if people say yay, they, they usually mean that a contribution is following right up behind it. <laughs> Last year, it, it would be almost impossible to document for you all the stuff that was done, and it seems in some ways small, the students wrote a constitution. The students have a functioning community governance process. I believe elections for community council, four students, two staff, two faculty, and one president who must be a student will take place on election day, November 6th, which may mean I have a broader meaning to the country, but will have double meaning here at Antioch. Um, I was also told that it was important for me to note that 60 people turned out for the International Film Festival and, Louise wanted me to specifically mention this, the hippie popcorn sold out. <laughs> I don't even know what hippie popcorn is. I doubt if I should be mentioning it in public, but it sold out. An academic assessment plan has been put in place and is being worked on, a faculty handbook a curriculum catalog, 
meetings all around campus now with small groups of faculty and staff and students participating in the self-study, which is the next part of the uh, accreditation process. Each of the six teams have come up with an average of 30 different ideas as to how to work on the things we're doing at the college and make them better. Um, this is our philosophy about accreditation, to honor the process, to make it our friend, and to use it to advance the work of the college. Um, the working farm. Uh, many people, Nick Budis and others, Kat, if you're here, who've worked on this farm, uh, yeah, a lot of other colleges have them, and that's a good thing. But as I understand it, none are as tied in specifically with the dining program at the college and also with the curriculum of the college. So we're trying to do things at a different level than other folks. <laughs> the chickens that alumni saw as hatchlings no longer are alive. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know why that's an achievement, but that's the case. Uh, they're dead now. And um, I believe they've been eaten as part of the dining cooperative program. At least I, I hope they have been eaten. Our new hoop house, our new hoop house, which is not related to hippie popcorn, has been planted with a third round of vegetables since its completion last winter. And Sam Sesnak, Sam, are you here? Senzak. Sam. Studying, studying. Um, Sam got the opportunity um, to successfully raise a duckling that had been abandoned by its mother, um, I believe through to adulthood, or through, what's adulthood for a duck? <laughs> I, I don't know, through to, through to a, the next level of, duck, of duck, duckling status. Thank you. At the Glen, staff, volunteers, and students, including Miller Fellow Rachel Smith, have been engaged in the largest land stewardship project in the history of Glen Helen. Over the course of this year, invasive species, that does not sound good, invasive species are being cleared from an area of over 90 acres, equivalent to about 10% of the Glen. So sunlight is reaching the forest floor for the first time in decades, allowing native species to fill the area once again. That's an applause line. We like native species. We're very down on invasive species. We welcome th three new members of the Board of Trustees here. Sylvia Turner, Sharon Merriman, and um, I actually know that Judy Church is not with us. Can you stand, please? Sharon and Sylvia. Notice the astute Sharon Merriman wearing cardinal red. Joking aside, um, one of the wonderful things about doing this work and being here is the ties to the Yellow Springs community. I see many villagers here with us. Uh, we intend only to deepen those ties as time goes on. We're working on two projects now around the Foundry Theater and around the Wellness Center. We're doing it in conjunction with the village. These will be shared institutions. I know the villagers have missed having the Wellness Center and the pool open. Um, these are the next, or two of the next major pro projects in the sequence renovations. The village is so warm and welcoming to our students. You notice the signs around town welcoming the new class. That means more than can be expressed. Jennifer Berman organized villagers hosting our students all for dinner in the last couple of weeks. I'm told that only at two of those occasions did food fights break out. That's definite improvement over last year. Um, our students took place in service projects in the village as part of orientation. I believe that was the first time, but we'll be doing it from here on because it was such a success. 60 students participated. Um, I've gotten a lot of notes from villagers thanking us for that work. 15 students are taking yoga at Yoga Springs. We're looking forward to working with the town on further, deeper collaborations around recycling and energy production and solar farms. Um, and I believe that this is, um, of all the colleges, of all when we meet as Great Lakes College Association, 
it's fairly clear to me we have the best relationship with the village that we're lucky enough to live in of any of the colleges. So it's a wonderful thing, and we're grateful to all the Yellow Springsers who are here with us. So lastly, the volunteers. Um, 38 volunteers, I believe, during this time, Penny, which is the largest number that we've had um, during this time. Um, during, since May, they have donated 2,754 hours of labor. They're working on the amphitheater, the science building cabinets. It's really a spectacular thing. So another round of applause and a thanks to the volunteers. So where are we? Um, we're making progress. And this isn't easy, folks. And if we thought this was going to be easy, uh, we were kidding ourselves. The accreditation process is extremely demanding. Um, the process of continuing to recruit students um, is a demanding process. We are extremely pleased with both the first and the second class that must continue. Um, the place where the rubber hits the road and the place where this is still daunting but doable is with money. And it is a challenge that this college has to face. Um, we here are on a campus that has been known for its idealism and its commitment for a very long period of time. And that is why we're here. If this campus and the things that have happened here and the ground we're all privileged to walk on didn't have meaning to Antiochians and to others, if it didn't have impact over a long period of time, on life in America, this enterprise would not have been possible. But as we look at the future and we think about how to get this done, um, we have to come to terms with the fact that we need to raise the funds to fuel the continued growth of this enterprise. Uh, so that is our challenge. Let me give you a couple of things to be proud of and that spur you on. Um, a lot of things in America a lot of things are not going the way that we thought they would. It's certainly not going the way I thought in my generation. I'm 56. We had such high hopes. We were going to be that generation that set this country on a different path. And in all honesty, it has not come to fruition. And in our colleges and universities, unfortunately, most of the institutions actually reaffirm and maintain the status quo rather than upend it during a time in which admissions to our most elite colleges has ostensibly been needs blind, an expression, by the way, that some of these colleges are retreating from, even if its meaning was not as profound as first thought. The top schools in America, only 8% of the students they serve come from the bottom 50% of America's economic structure. So in the main, our highest quality educational institutions perpetuate the way things are. To me, when you think about social justice and you think about this college's long history in that area and you think about what does it mean now? What is the particular challenge for this college at this time to keep that alive? The major question is whom are we going to serve? And so far, this college has stepped forward with far less means than others in providing the Horace Mann Scholarship to make it very clear that we intend to serve students from the broad spectrum of American life, and that we cannot back away from. So, as we assess and take stock of where we are and how many challenges are still in front of us. I think the most important for things for us to commit to, all of us together, is that we will do what we are doing right. We will do what we are doing with integrity. We will do what we are doing in keeping with the history of this college. We will not break faith with those who came before us. Now, what that means, So far, by the way, that has been the most supportive table. 
I know my wife is sitting over here, and that's the most supportive table. I love you guys. It's mutual. So as we, as we think again about what we're doing and think again about North Hall, which David Goodman, who yelled out yay, push us on, OK? Because you see the solar panels on the roof. You don't see, luckily, the geothermal heating and cooling tubes underneath the horseshoe, but I assure you they are there. This costs more than if we had done it with traditional heating and cooling, a not inconsiderable amount more. We will regain some of those funds down the road. But these decisions define who we are. And these decisions we have to be able to keep making in the way that we have been able to make them. That's only possible um, through the return to the idea of what it means to be all in. Uh, at this stage, folks, we need people who love this college to be all in with us as we make the next steps in our path towards growth. Um, so I want to thank everybody here, uh, the alumni board, um, who provided the spark and the catalyst um, to gain this college back to its independence, uh, to its rightful place as an independent liberal arts college in America. Uh, the board of trustees who have picked up that mantle, who have dug deep in their own um, personal situation uh, to give us what we need uh, to get us to the starting gate. Uh, and to all of the rest of you uh, who pitch in in so many different ways um, to do what needs to be done uh, to keep the dream of an independent, viable Antioch alive. My pledge to you is real simple. Um, to those of us who are privileged, I look at Hassan, I look at Louise, we feel privileged to be doing this work with you. And our commitment is uh, we will do everything within our power uh, to make sure that this college regains its status as one of America's great institutions, not just because of academic rankings, not just because of the rigor of the work that will happen in the classrooms, even though that is real, because we are not neutral on the fact that we are educating students in the hope that they will go out and do better than our generation did at tackling the greatest problems that this country and this world face. Uh, we, it's, a, it's a bit of a burden, and sometimes I wrestle with how to best language it, but um, it's deep within the soul of this institution, and everybody here knows it. So I want to end by um, actually quoting um, some words from and, and Francis helped me, that, is it Talmud? The Talmud, see? I did it, I got it right. Um, and again, I myself, um, um, I was uh, writing this Roosevelt Reads column, I write, and I was reminding myself of Julian Barnes's memoir, and I was talking to Louise about it. Julian Barnes said, uh, he doesn't necessarily believe in God, uh, but he misses God. And that's probably as accurate a summary of my own spiritual condition as there is. Um, but sometimes one needs to draw on these things. And the Talmud says to all of us, look ahead. You are not expected to complete the task. Neither are you permitted to lay it down. So thank you all so much for what you do.